Hi, I'm Joe James, and this lesson is going to cover Depth First Search. Depth First Search is a graph traversal algorithm. When given a choice, it will explore deeper into a graph, unlike the Breadth First Search, which explores a graph breadthwise first. It works on both directed and undirected graphs. Now, there are a variety of different ways to implement Depth First Search. My implementation here, we're going to use these vertex attributes. We're going to use a discovery time and finish time to track the time of discovery and finish for each vertex. We're going to use color to mark the state of each vertex. And we're going to use a predecessor vertex, variable usually named pi, to record the path that we followed to get to a vertex. So we're going to apply depth first search to this undirected graph. We'll start with vertex A. We select any vertex to be the source. In this case, we're going to choose vertex A. We're going to use red color to indicate a vertex that has been discovered. Since we discovered vertex A, we give it a discovery time of 1. Next, we look at A's edges to undiscovered vertices. So we have B and E. We're going to choose the one that comes first alphabetically, which is vertex B. So we give vertex B a discovery time of 2. We go to vertex B, we paint it red, and then we look at B's outgoing edges. B has only one edge going to vertex F. So we give vertex F a discovery time of 3. We paint F red, and then we look at F's edges going to undiscovered vertices. And we can see there are three, G, I, and J. G comes first alphabetically. So we'll go to vertex G. We'll paint it red, give it a discovery time of four, and then look at G's edges to undiscovered vertices. So we have two to choose from, C and J. We'll go to C. We'll paint red, C red. We'll give it a discovery time of five. And you'll note now that C is a dead end. There's nowhere else to go. We're going to have to backtrack. So what we do is we paint C blue to indicate that it's finished. We give it a finish time of 6. And then we backtrack to vertex G. So from vertex G, we still have not explored vertex J. So we're going to go there next. We give vertex J a discovery time of 7. Vertex J is also a dead end, because we already discovered vertices F and G. So there's nowhere else to go. So vertex J gets a finish time of 8, and it gets painted blue. And then we backtrack to vertex G again. Now vertex G is also a dead end, because we've already discovered every vertex that connects to G. So we give vertex G a finish time of 9. We paint vertex G blue to indicate that it's finished. And we backtrack to vertex F. From F, we have one unexplored vertex, I. So we'll go to vertex I. We give it a discovery time of 10. We paint I red. And then we look at I's edges to unexplored vertices. So next we'll go to vertex H. We give H a discovery time of 11. We paint H red, and then we'll look at H's connected vertices that are unexplored. So we have D and E to choose from. D comes first alphabetically, so we'll choose D, which we give a, ver a discovery time of 12. We paint D red, and then we look at where we can go from D. D has only one edge to an unexplored vertex, which is E. So we're going to take this path to E. We give vertex E a discovery time of 13. We paint E red. Now E is a dead end, because all the other vertices on the graph, well, every vertex connected to E and every vertex on the graph, has already been discovered. So there's nowhere else to go. So we give E a finish time of 14. We paint E blue, and then we have to backtrack to D. We give D a finish time of 15 and paint D blue. We backtrack to H, which gets a finish time of 16. 
and we backtrack to I. Finish time of 17. F gets a finish time of 18. And we're going to backtrack all the way to the source, vertex A. Now every vertex is painted blue, which means that they've all been finished. They all have a start and a finish time. And we're finished explore the depth first search for this graph. You also note that there are 10 vertices on the graph and we have counted up to 20, which means that each graph has two times a start and, or a discovery and a finish time, and we've used a total of 20 numbers. So what do we do next? We've finished our depth first search, and we have start and finish times for each vertex. What can we do with that data? Well, the depth first search is going to be based on discovery time for each vertex. So the output for our depth first search is going to be the discovery times starting with 1, or the lowest, which is vertex A at 1, followed by vertex B with 2, followed by vertex F with 3, and then vertex G with 4, and so on. So you can see our depth first search output is just the list of vertices sorted by increasing discovery time. We can also do a topological sort by sorting the vertices in order of decreasing finish times. So we'll look at the highest finish time first, which is vertex A with 20. The next highest is vertex B with 19, followed by vertex F with 18, vertex I with 17, vertex H, vertex D, E, G, J, and C. So it's that simple to produce a topological sort after we finish the depth first search. We simply sort the vertices by decreasing finish times. One other valuable piece of information we can do uh, with this graph an alternate representation of the graph is called parenthetical or parenthesis notation. It's pretty easy to produce given the start and finish times for the graph. So we're basically going to walk through the start and finish times in order from 1 to 20. For each discovery time, we're going to show an open bracket. And for each finish time, we'll show a closed bracket. So for our first event, A, is a discovery time of 1. We're going to show an open bracket A. Our second event is B discovery. So we're going to show an open bracket with B. Our third event is a discovery of F. So we'll show an open bracket with F. Fourth event is a discovery of G. So we'll show an open bracket with G. The fifth event is an open bracket with C. So it's a discovery of C. Next we have a closed bracket for C because 6 is next. Followed by an open bracket and then a closed bracket for J. And 9 is a closed bracket for G because G is finished next. And so on. So this is how we can build a parenthesis notation for this graph using the discovery and finish times. I hope you enjoyed this video on depth first search. I'm Joe James. Thank you for watching. <laughs>